What's up, wrestling fans, trading card collectors? Welcome to the first ever Instagram Live Wrestling with Cards Live episode. I do these live on Instagram. This is the first episode. Like I said, hopefully going to try to do these, I don't know, once or twice a month. I encourage you to go follow me on Instagram and be part of the show. Come on, talk about whatever. Drop notes in the chat. Come on the show live. We'll talk wrestling cards, sports cards, whatever you want to talk about. We're going to talk about. So thanks for checking out the video today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Here you go. Welcome to the first Wrestling With Cards Live. Hopefully everybody starts filing in. Great, awesome, glad the audio is working. I've used these earbuds before, they're the best, and sometimes they just don't pick up on certain things, so whatever. Great Bambino, what's up? Hambino. Only person to recognize Old Man's Child when I posted that, so that's awesome. We need to stock some metal. We want, oh, there goes the lights. I'm gonna hopefully wait for some people to file in here. For sure have one guest already planned. Drake's PC is hopefully gonna show up. One of my favorite collectors, just all over the place with his collection and kind of like me, he's want like the top highest of the high end, doesn't really mess around with a lot of other things. I know that's kind of frowned upon with a lot of people, but yeah, whatever. Hey, speaking of metal, I have some cards. I'm sure you guys saw them, but the uh, King Diamond cards, fantastic. I think that's like the only card in that box, which I have a sealed case back here. Box, I should say. These uh, Mega Metal, they were all over eBay, and they're really drying up now. But a lot of the bands in there, like, I think Iron Maiden and Judas Priest are in there, but a lot of the bands are, like, Bon Jovi and stuff like that, which I don't hate, but I was really hoping for the, uh, you know, heavier stuff, crazier stuff. Drake is here. Drake, let me know when you're ready and we can bring you on. Yeah, if you if you can find those cards, um, I think they're going to look great slabbed. If you like those bands, some people may not even like those bands, but... All right. Bring it on, Drake. Bring it on, Drake. What's up, man? Hey, man. How you doing? Hey, How you doing? Happy to have you on. I'm always envious and I'm not going to say jealous. I think we're on the same wavelength on our collections. The highest of the high end and all over the place. That's what I like. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Lots of fun, for sure. It's always nice to see yeah. what you got and what you're sharing and all that. You already told me ahead of time you were bringing cards, so what do you got? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. A lot of these are super new. Um, you know, I think we've talked about before, like the Action Pact, right? The Undertaker yep. signature out of 500. Same thing with the Macho Man. Um, you know, we've seen those. Obviously, The Rock. I mean, you, what, you can't have a wrestling collection without a Rock autograph, right? Right. Um, you know, the other thing I've shared on my page, too, um, recently is around the Transcendent product, right? Um, yeah. I really like these autos, and I'm kind of I'm kind of on a little bit of a chase now. You know, there's Vince, uh, obviously, and then Brock. That was my mo most recent pickup. And for whatever reason, I started out with the out of 10, and so I've just been sticking with the out of 10. So I'm trying to pick up a lot of those. You know, I'm not, got, not wanting to pick up everybody um, right. you know, that I see. But, you know, like the, the top people that I remember growing up, you know, I think like we've talked about nostalgia is a big thing. Um, and so, you know, you grew up with Brock and uh, Vince and Stone Cold and all that kind of stuff. So that's a few cards. The other thing that I have, and I'll maybe we can get consensus from the chat, but I picked up the 97 oh, yeah. stickers. I've got the sealed box, you know, and so I'm sitting here yeah. and I'm like, do I, do I rip it or do I keep it sealed? Right. Um, you know, the, the collector part of me just wants to see what's in it because I've seen a lot of people get it out and all that, but I'm still just, I'm like, I don't know. So um, I'm kind of waiting to see what Rob's, uh, you know, his PSA 10, Rocky Maivia. Yeah, sticker golden auctions, auction. right? Yeah, and auctions. I'm kind of wanting to see what that does, and then maybe that'll help make my decision. So if anybody in the chat or, or anything, you know, has any recommendations, I'm, I'm all ears. Well, I may be able to help you. I've got a box sitting up here on the shelf at Yamwax that me. I don't think he's in the chat yet. He, he may be coming on later. I'm not sure. But we're actually going to do a break 
of that on here sometimes oh, that's so and that. selling off spots. So if you want a spot and you're patient enough to hold on to your own wax, which I personally am, I'm sure you can see behind me, I got boxes of all kinds of stuff, but I know that's a touchy subject for a lot of people. A lot of people can't, they don't have the uh, patience to hold on to that stuff. No, no, it's tough. It's tough to keep anything sealed. <laughs> you know, you want to break into it and see what you have. You can expand your collection. You know, it's not so much of like, ooh, you know, am I going to find a perfect PSA 10 or anything like right. that? It's just, you know, you kind of, I don't know. It's just, it's keeping it, it's it's in its purest state, if you will. Yeah, so, I agree. And it makes me like, the thing with sealed wax was, me, hey, there's the M wax, by the way, finally just not showing up. Um, the thing with the sealed wax to me is it's like walking into the card shop of the stuff I couldn't afford when I was 10 years old, like just having it sitting there and you know, it's appreciating in value. I said this on some recent videos that I've filmed, but they're not up yet. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube once it's gone. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. The last thing I wanted to share in terms of sharing stuff, this isn't a card. Um, you know, it, I was looking and I remembered I had it. I couldn't remember where I had it, but it's my WrestleMania 20 ticket when I went Fantastic. to the Madison square garden in New York and I was looking at the date, I'm like, geez, was that really 17 years ago? Um, it's, it seems like yesterday. Um, and it, it was actually a kind of a cool story. I wasn't planning to go. Um, and it happened to be spring break, um, that week and my family and, uh, one of my sister's friends, family decided last minute, like, Hey, let's go to New York city. Um, which seems crazy. But anyway, so we went there and I realized I'm like, shoot, WrestleMania is that, is that Sunday? I said, I'm literally, we were staying um, right off of Times Square and I'm thinking, you know, I've got to find a way to get in there. Um, and so I walked down the street and found a, a scalper, right. Um, who sold me a <laughs> ticket that was, that was not much more for than, than face value. And I'm, I'm standing in line and I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, here I am, I'm getting to go to WrestleMania 20. I'm in. And as soon as you walk into the building, there's all these uh, uh, staffers there. And all they're saying is, is, uh, if you bought a ticket from the street, odds are it's fake. <laughs> so there I am. And I think I paid, I don't know, 200 bucks for the ticket. And I am just sweating, you know, and I'm getting closer and closer to the scanner. And the next thing you know, they scan it in um, and it worked. Um, and so I went and I sat down and there I was kind of by myself. And it was kind of cool because to the right of me, there was a guy from England. Um, and to the left was a guy for, from Australia. Um, and so it just kind of showed the worldwide appeal and, you know, of, of wrestling and things like that. So it was a cool experience to be a part of. Yeah. And the story, uh, sweating bullets, trying to get in there with a fake ticket. That alone is the story <laughs> right there. <laughs> For sure. Uh, going back on those transcendent cards. One thing I see a lot of people ask, and, since and I've tried to get that Vince auto several times and you know how it goes. Like you see something, you got it on your watch list and then, all of a sudden something else pops up and you're like, well, this is even more rare than this. So you go with that. Are those transcendent cards, are they metal around the outside of the cardboard? Are they a uh, standard stock thicker? Can you maybe help people out with that? Yeah, it's thicker. Let me see if I can take one out of the case here. Um, just a second. Sorry. Oh, that's definitely, cool. They're definitely thick. They weigh, weigh quite a bit more. Let's see if we can get in front of the camera. So it, it is kind of like a gold oh, yeah. frame metal, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, and the card obviously extends, you know, how, how thick it is, but no, it's very, it's, it's definitely very, very heavy, but it's, um, it's paper obviously on the sides. I don't know what's in the middle. It's probably some kind of cardboard or something, but, but again, it is a very, it's a metal, metal framed uh, card. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder how the grading takes into consideration with that. Yeah, I'm not sure. You, you know, you look, you really don't see it, too many of them graded. I think I saw the other one the uh, other day. There's a Daniel Bryan one. Um, I think it was graded. Of course, there's a pop one. I just don't think people are grading them. Um, I think the risk is just it's kind of one of those things. It's like a patch auto card. You know, it's like you send it in and most of them are you send a PSA. They're you know mostly going to grade like a seven. Um, and when, you know, if you're look, ever looking to resell, if somebody, you know, wants to resell it and they see PSA 7, even though it's perfect straight out of a pack condition, just people want to run away from that. So, you know, I think ju just for me, like I'm not planning to grade it. I'm just going to keep it, keep it like that. You know, the only reason I would grade it would just be to, for protection's sake. Um, right. So. That's kind of what I'm doing with a lot of my stuff. I'm just doing a little bit at a time, but I'm, I'm pretty, you, I'm sure everybody that's in the chat or you personally have seen the videos. Like if it's a, like a sought after iconic player. So, you know, Kobe, LeBron, Jordan, 
Hogan, Brady, you know, that, that tier, Steve, and go back into wrestling, The Rock, Steve Austin, Undertaker, Macho. Those guys, like, I'm pretty much grading any of the higher-end cards, even if they're going to get a lower grade. And recently, I've again, I filmed the video yesterday. It won't be coming out for a while, but on a market watch for February, there's a Hogan SGC. So there's your there's your first point, SGC slab, because nobody – I learned the lesson the hard way on that. Nobody wants those. SGC 1.582 Hogan sold for just under $2,000. So that just drives home the pri the thing that I've been saying to everybody, because I get called out all the time. Everybody's like, oh, well, this is not a PSA 10. It has no appeal. And you just mentioned it as well. You know, people run away from the sevens. I think that's going to start changing with some of these cards. And we're already seeing it in the sports card world with vintage baseball stuff and super low grade going for huge amounts of money. Do you have any opinion on that? And I, it's fine if you disagree with me. I'm just curious. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's tough to say. I think it's just, are people going to become more educated to really understand that, that, you know, going back to, again, the patch auto, that if you get a seven, that's not a bad grade for that type of a card. Um, right. I think people, you know, it's, you know, you hear the old saying, right? You buy the card, not the grade, um, oh, right? Yeah. I think I think it, the opposite mentality is still kind of true in the market today. People buy the grade before the card. You know, you go, you go and look at some of these cards that are graded at 10 um, and things like that. And you look at it and you're going, you know, like how in the world did that grade a 10, right? Um, and so I think people are still buying the slab before the actual card. And so until that kind of switches and you really understand like, okay, this is why I got the grade that it did. And maybe we need more advancements in grading and things of that nature. But um, I think you're not going to see that until that shift happens. Yeah, and that, more about education. Like people just don't understand wrestling cards and just like the type of paper they're printed on. And going back to some of the stuff you showed off, like the uh, like that that Rock Auto, you're not gonna like if you find a ten in that, that's a unicorn because those types those comic images, the chipping on them is so bad. And there's so many wrestling cards like that that even if you got like a eight or a nine on them, it's it's considered good. And then you, if you're into the pop reports, like I personally don't care if I have a really awesome card, it's a really awesome card. Like, um, like look at the 86 Fleer Jordan pop reports, or if you want to go to modern, the Luca pop reports, people are still going crazy for that. So I'm not a big pop report guy, but I think that's just another avenue to create the scarcity for the wrestling cards. Any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think so. I think, you know, when you look at the pop reports, it's out there, but it does, it does concern me a little bit, I'll say, because there aren't, you look at the older vintage wrestling cards, you know, those cards weren't numbered, right? And so right. as things have come up, you know, I don't expect a bunch of tens to roll in, but it does concern me. Like if you look at the 1982 All-Stars Hogan, right? There's there's no tens, there's what, 58s and 16 nines. Um, you know, I think a lot of that value right now is propped up on the lower populations. Um, but I wonder too, you know, how many of those are, or sitting in people's, you know, homes or sitting at PSA or, or Beckett or wherever, you know, they want to send cards in that are waiting to be graded right now. Um, you know, and if those pop reports start to increase, you know, even if they, if they double, say you take 58s to 108s and 16 nines to 32 nines, you know, what that, what kind of effect that has on pricing of those cards? I guess it maybe could depend on the demand. You know, if the right. demand's picking up in the, you know, if there's, a million people want that Hogan card and there's only let's let's just hypothetically say that there ends up being like 500 PSA 10s, you know, 20 years from now. That's still super low, I think, compared to a lot of other stuff. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You know, I think the thing that I that I struggle with a little bit, too, and this may be a, a good conversation and not to not to go off the deep end too much. But that's you know, what I like to do is go <laughs> off the deep end. <laughs> Well, with, with growing up in Memphis, right? I grew up in Memphis, went to the Mid-South Coliseum every yep. Monday night, you know, saw wrestling, you know, was big into getting autographs and, you know, memorabilia and things like that. And I was big into cards growing up. You know, I had baseball, football, basketball, those kind of cards. But I never knew wrestling cards existed literally until like middle of the year last year. Um, and so that, that part I wonder about, especially on the higher end of the market, is how many people are going to come in that want those higher end wrestling cards, um, similar to folks that come in and want the higher end, say basketball, you know, LeBron, Michael Jordan, yeah. Kobe, Kobe type cards. And, and is there going to be enough people, you know, because as we know, there are wrestling fans, there's a ton of wrestling fans out there. 
But how and many you said it earlier. World... Yes, exactly. But it's like, but how, how many of those wrestling cards, or, I mean, excuse me, how many of those wrestling fans are wanting to get into wrestling cards or even know that wrestling cards exist, right? Right. Um, and it, is, that, is that demand going to keep up with the supply? Because I think right now there's a flight to GOATS and obviously, Hulk, you know, the Hulk Hogan's and the Ric Flair's and Andre the Giant and, you know, those kind of guys are the goats. But as those prices keep going up, you know, and, and, and I was looking at there hasn't been a PSA 9 of the 82 All-Stars come up for sale in quite a while. You know, and my guess is, that you know, one comes up for sale, it's going to go in, you know, the high five figures, maybe six figures. Um, it's it's how, how many people are out there to sustain those values and are more people coming in that want those higher end type wrestling cards um, versus the same people that are coming in wanting the higher end, you know, more mainstream basketball, football, baseball type cards? Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic. I mean, my opinion is that the, the tippy top stuff you're talking about, I think it's just going to keep going up because there's not as much of it. And I think there's enough of a demand for that high end stuff. Here is an interesting comment here. Um, I think the Hogan biopic is going to make that a six figure card. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I think it could, I think it's going to bring, bring uh, more attention back right to him. But I also wonder too, you know, is there, is there still some people with the way the culture is now that still remembers what happened with him a few years ago, you know, with the racist remarks um, and things like that. Is that, is that going to hold, hold anything back as it relates to Hogan? You know, I think, I think with Kobe, we saw that a little bit, but now his values yeah. are through the roof. So, so I think after time, people kind of forgive and forget um, and, and tend to move on. Um, but I think, you know, I do think that, um, you know, I do think that, that we should see a rise, rise from that. Um, I think one of my bigger concerns, um, sorry if I cut you off. Did you, okay. No, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. One of my, one of my bigger concerns is actually for, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say modern product. Because look what you just showed. I think those cards, the, those uh, transcendent cards you just showed are going to stand the test of time. But I worry about the modern stars. Like, I kind of look at them as kind of like prospecting in baseball Bowman or basketball Prism in that they could be the next Hogan, but more likely than not, they would be the equivalence of being out of the league in a few years, so to speak. Um, we've just, you know, in the past couple years, look at all the releases that WWE's had and the other thing that concerns me is I know it's a worldwide appeal, but do you know how many kids are actually this into the product? Like you said that you didn't, you didn't know that wrestling cards even existed back when you were a kid. And when I was a kid, it was all like, you know, my, <laughs> I've said it on videos before, like my dad and my uncle, everybody that was into super into baseball. Like this is what you need to get. This is what you need to save your money for. This is going to put you through college, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I was interested in the Nintendo cards, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and the wrestling. Some of that stuff I still have, and it's kind of overpowered that. So I'm wondering, are people going to start gravitating more towards Pokemon? You know, that, that's a huge franchise for younger people. What do you think on that? I mean, you, you have a kid. What, do you, what is she, Does she like wrestling now that I sent her those cards? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think she likes seeing, seeing the females on the cards, you know. But, but, but you know, with, with my son being... Uh, you know, he's eight and he's big into, you know, Roblox and Fortnite and all that kind of stuff, you know, and I kind of wonder, you know, is, and I think we've seen this out is Fortnite or those cards going to be the, the Pokemon of this generation. Um, I don't know, maybe so, maybe not. Um, but I'm just curious to see how that plays out. And I'm trying to pay attention to what he's interested in. You know, he's, he's actually with, with the Pokemon cards. He, he was the one who asked me about those. He's more into the Pokemon and, you know, he's asking me about Pikachu and um, Charizard, you know, that kind of stuff. And so that's what kind of made me look into that market. And I wanted to grab him some of those cards, you know, for him to keep in his collection. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you on the modern market. I do think wrestling cards, you know, you can actually find some of them when you go to a retail store, which is nice because right. you can't find the other product. Um, and so, you know, I think they're fun to open. But the concern I have with, I guess, modern wrestling cards and modern wrestling in general is there is there's very few people that are now allowed to make their own persona. Uh, I think Vince and Triple H and those guys, they just swap people out. You know, we just saw that uh, we saw that Andrade asked for his release, right? Yeah, yesterday. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, six months a year ago, that guy was a star. You know, he's uh, you know he's what is he married to Charlotte Flair and you know that kind of stuff. And so um, 
you know, it just, it's surprising that people just come and go in and out so far and you don't have those, you know, stars that are created that just stay that way. It's like Vince doesn't want, and I'm, I'm saying Vince, maybe it's Triple H, maybe, you know, who knows who it is now, uh, Stephanie, but they're not allowing anybody to get bigger than the company now. Um, whereas in the 90s, you had Rock and Austin and Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and those folks who, you know, were really larger than life. Um, and I think they're just, they're holding everybody down and they're just swapping people out in and out as quick as they can. Um, and I think that's severely limiting, I think, the long term, um, you know, long and short term kind of prosperity of not only wrestling in general, but I think their cards as well, too. Uh, one other on the flip side of that, I've seen a lot of people on different social platforms, like starting to do player collecting with the wrestlers and getting trying to get the super fractors and putting together the rainbows. And even though I'm not like a fan of those specific wrestlers, like that style of collecting is one of my favorite things in the world. Just I always love player collecting. And to see some of the more modern stars, you know, like uh, there's several Daniel Bryan collectors out there I've seen. And that's he's kind of in between. He's not quite the legend, but he's not, you know, he's still active enough for modern fans. But uh, have you, what do you think about that? Like, do you, are you putting together any kind of specific collections as far as like uh, specific wrestlers or like I've looked at your, collection before and you you just have like the, the best of the best. Are you kind of doing that with wrestling too, as far as the names go? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm doing. It's more, you know, again, the nostalgia factor. It's kind of just going back to the guys that I remember liking and watching growing up and, you know, and, and, and the way I've always collected is I don't buy multiples of cards. I just buy one. So it's like, you know, typically like I just want, you know, one Brock Lesnar autograph, one Vince autograph, you know, one Hulk Hogan autograph, uh, you know, Bret Hart, Macho Man, Undertaker, things like that. Um, and so that's, that's just kind of the way I do it is just, you know, instead of having just a ton of cards of a certain, you know, certain player or whatever, um, you know, uh, it, it's that, that's just the way that I like to collect is just get a couple good cards, you know, one or two good cards of each each wrestler, you know, that I like from watching growing up. So, yeah, that's and another thing, actually, and this really parlays into your collection. If you're not if you're not stacking up cards multiples, it'll it's allowing you to go different directions. I think that's another thing that, uh, that some people in the sports card world get it that you know I like to reach out and go get Kobe's or Jordans or LeBron's, whether it's low end high whatever. But I think a lot of people in the wrestling card space are like, no, you can't. You like only have to buy wrestling cards. You're a prime example of that as far as you're reaching out all over the place. How do you uh, I guess how do you handle doing multiple things like that? <laughs> So it's tough, right? You know, I, I ask myself a lot of times, I'm like, you know, should I just stick to something or, you know, I just get too, too diversified, I think is a, is an issue or whatever. And I'm sitting in my office and I've got jerseys and helmets and up above or footballs. And, um, you know, I've got wrestling boots and all different kinds of things. I, I just enjoy collecting just in general. Right. And right. so, but like you said, it is difficult because, you know, unfortunately I don't have a money tree in the backyard where it just keeps reproducing money and all that. So you kind of have to pick and choose, you know, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to pick up like a Brock autograph for a couple hundred bucks. Right. And, you know, it's a, it's a wrestler you like, it's an autograph, it's numbered out of 10, you know, it checks all the boxes for me. Well, um, and he doesn't even, he doesn't sign that much. It, yep. It, yep. Exactly. Um, so it's a guy that doesn't sign much, you know, and it, it's, it's easier to do that for me then try to go out and say, hey, you know, I want to go spend tens of thousands of dollars trying to get a LeBron auto, you know, even though it's a great investment, um, I can just I can get more for my collection um, at scale that way. Uh, anybody in the chat have any questions or want to come on? We're just kind of hanging out here. You know, you're talking about in the meantime, we we're talking about, you know, what what the future holds. Like, I just got this in the mail. It's not even that big of a card. The first Diamond Dallas page. Card from oh, love the, it, like, love it. Yeah, so me and you love it, but like that's a kind of card that I'm wondering, like, you know, what's the market going to be for that in 20 years? Are people DDP Yoga is kind of taken off, so that's kind of established him. But you know, in the grand scheme of things, are people going to look at him like they look at some of the sports stars that aren't quite Kobe or LeBron or Jordan, but just the step underneath that? There's a lot of, I think, wrestlers that you could put in that category. What do you thought on that? Yeah, I think so, too. You know, I think when it comes to wrestling, you know, long term, it's going to be The Rock. It's going to be The Hogan. It's going to be Stone Cold. It's going to be Flair. Um, you know, probably insert a couple more in there, right? But um, after that, it's kind of a tier below. 
and you've really got to get the true hardcore collector fan, things like that. That's going to be very interested in that. Uh, here's a comment. It's like any sport collect the greats, but it's okay to prospect on other guys you like for your collection. You currently prospecting on anything in any sport? <laughs> anything and in I, any when sport. I say, so, when I say sport, I'm going to say, uh, I'll just say cardboard. How about that? Yeah, no, exactly. Um, it's, I'd say in wrestling, no, I'm not doing that. Basketball, um, I would probably say that Luka Doncic's probably my biggest prospect that I've got a significant amount of money invested into. Um, it's not just because everybody loves Luke and all that. So my son's name is Luke. Um, we live in oh, Arkansas. Cool. We get all the, uh, so we get all the Mavs games. And so we, we watch the Mavs games and he, because his name's Luke and he likes Luka and likes watching him play. Um, and so whenever I got back into it, was it a year and a half ago now, you know, I started just scooping up a bunch of Luca cards and, you know, fortunately it, it worked out. Um, but that's probably the biggest prospect that I have in my collection. Other than that, it's, you know, it's the hall of famers and greats from all the three, we'll say major sports, if you will. Another question here. How important do you guys think it is to you personally to enjoy the hobby and build your PC at the same time? So, yeah. So for me, I think that's, that's important. I mean, you've got to, you've got to have fun while you're doing it. If you're buying cards or whatever it is, memorabilia or whatever, and it's stressing you out, um, you know, maybe you need to reevaluate, like, is this something I need to be doing? Because, you know, it's one of two things, you know, you could be overextending yourself. Um, you know, my advice is don't, don't max out your credit card on cards or memorabilia, huh. you know, number one, yeah. it's, it's easy to do, uh, but don't do that. Um, but then the other thing is, too, um, and I saw that Josh and Chris were on a little while ago. I don't know if they're still on. But, you know, if you subscribe to, like, say, whether it's Card Ladder or whatever tra data tracking tool you get, um, every day they send you an email and it'll say, like, your collection went up or it went down and all that kind of stuff. And that can be kind of stressful, too. Um, but I think you just have to look at it. And, and this was pointed out last week on Instagram, I think, is that, you know, if 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 your collection, the value of your collection goes up, that's great because it shows, Hey, I'm collecting the right things and other people like what I'm collecting. But if it goes down, like don't, don't lose sleep over it. Don't get upset about it. Just say, Hey, it's, it went down, but that just means there's more buying opportunities. There's more ways for me to add and build my collection, right? Because everybody's got their own unique collection. Um, you know, you're not going to build it the same way. You know, you and I aren't going to build our collections the same way. Uh, we each make our decisions, you know, based on what we think is important to us, what makes financial sense for us and our families, um, things like that. So, yes. Yeah, so I think that, you know, you have to enjoy it. You have to have fun with it. Um, if you're if you're always looking at it from the financial side of things or if you're always, you know, making your decisions like, hey, the only reason I want to buy this is because I think it's going to go up in value. Um, you're going to have a lot of sleepless sleepless nights um, potentially and not have as much fun as you could. I agree. I think uh, balance is great. For example, let me see if I can have anything. Oh, yeah, I do, actually. So I absolutely hate Tom Brady. Hate the guy. Can't deny the greatness and can't deny the cardboard. So especially because I'm a Bills fan, I super hate him. But you, like, kind of go back and you realize, well, some of this, th this is probably the way to go. So, like, I have some... 2020 prism, you know, I, they're, they're like seven bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Bought a few of those thinking they will go up. I don't, I, you know, I, I better not start a Brady PC or I'm going to hate myself, but <laughs> I don't plan on hanging on those forever. However, like uh, a lot of people know I'm a big metal fan. I've got these King diamond cards. So the, these were only $2. This is like prospecting to me. I don't expect them to ever go up in value, but they're going to stay in my collection forever. On the flip side, like I like Brock, but I've got these cards that are the first card ever in the Tops Now WWE set, and there's only 133 of them. I'll probably flip those. But it's kind of uh, managing, for me, managing uh, downside risk. So, like, if I'm spending under $10 on a card, like, what do you got to lose? Exactly. You know exactly. And if, like... I don't, if I'm a prospect on anything, that's kind of my price range. Uh, if, but then on the flip side, 
Um, if I see Hogan, you know, the Hogan PMG is my favorite Hogan card of all time. You got oh, one. Thanks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> if I see another one of those pop up and I've got the money to do it, or if I can flip into it, I don't, there's like, I'll just overpay for it. I don't care. Right. Oh yeah. So oh, that's yeah. kind of, that's kind of balancing. I think the two aspects of everything you just talked about. Oh, for sure. For sure. And, and, and the other thing I think that's tough too sometimes is, you know, there's so many, I guess, corners to turn in every segment of the hobby, right? So whether yeah. it's wrestling cards or whatever cards. And I think that it's tough too, because you may have your eyes on something and think about it. Um, and then you see someone post something and you're like, wow, that's awesome. Like I, uh, like for example, Rob England, I saw that he's joined. Um, so hopefully he's still on. Shout out, Rob. Yeah, Rob. Um, and, you know, he posted the Brock Lesnar uh, wrestling cards, you know, the wrestling autos uh, when he was actually wearing a singlet wrestling and all that. And I had never seen those before. And I looked at that and I'm like, wow, that's that's awesome. You know, I think I might want one of those. Um, and so it's just the more you get into something, the more you find out um, that I that, again, it's it's all it's very difficult not to. Not to just blow your, yeah. <laughs> you know, blow all your disposable money on, on things. And so, you know, a lot of times you, and I think this is important for everybody to, to know is if you may see something and it may have a low number out of 10 or out of 20 or something like that. And you may feel like if I don't buy this right now, I'm never going to have an opportunity to buy it again. Um, and my advice, I guess, would be is that unless it's a one of one, <laughs> odds are it's probably going to pop up again. So don't, so again, don't overextend yourself or don't, you know, um, you know, don't not feed your family or whatever the case may be to try to go buy a card because, you know, you think you're going to miss out yeah. on it because, you know, it's tough not to have FOMO, um, but oh, always yeah. just take, just take a step back and, and think about it. Two things actually you just now said that made me think, uh, Yam Wax was wanting to get into the video, so we'll see if we can get him in after this question, but. Uh, talk about FOMO and, you know, should you buy this card? Should you pass on it? I've only done that twice. Uh, that was with the PMG Hogan. And since then, I've only seen one posted. I got mine. What was yours? A 9.5, right? 9.5. Mm -hmm. Mine was a 9. And then somebody posted a PSA 10 that went for way more than what we paid for. <laughs> so, uh, but it, since then, since those three listings, yours, mine, and that one, I've not seen one pop up an, no. again. So that was one of those things where I was like, I've got to jump on. This, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. The second thing I've done that with that done that with, and it was on a video I did recently, was that dual auto with Hogan and Vince. Yes. And since then, I've never seen one again, and I hadn't seen one before. So, also with that, you're talking about all the corners of the hobby you can go. That's another thing. Like me and you, we're we're both so like varied in our approach that if we're a player collector or you're wanting to go after one of these goat cards and you get priced out on it, you like so many other things over here that you can go get it. For example, like I just started dabbling in video games and I was looking at, I don't remember what Hogan card I was looking at, but I was looking at a specific card and it just kept going up and up and up. And I said, forget it. I went over here, found a complete inbox NBA jam for 30 bucks shipped. And I'm like, okay, I'll just grab this and send it to WADA for the same price as what I was going to, you know, and I love NBA jam. So I could either flip that or keep it forever. It's just like, I'm just surrounded by all of these things. And I think that's one thing that people should look at. I'm not saying like, start dabbling in outside things just for the sake of it. But what did you like growing up? What do you, what other hobbies do you like that could kind of correlate in the same space of trading cards? Yeah. So, so I guess really growing up, you know, I was just really big into sports and, and, and honestly cards and that that's kind of what I, what I did. I mean, that was what I collected, you know, I, of course I played Nintendo, um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I had that, um, it, it's funny. I've tried to get my son back into it. We, we got him the, the Nintendo retro or, Super oh, yeah. Nintendo Retro, and I'm I'm playing this, and he's looking at it, he's like, Dad, uh, the graphics on this suck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's not very interested in it, and I, you know, I'm tr I'm trying to get pumped. You know, we're trying to play these different games and all that, and it's not that. But um, that that that's honestly really what I was into a lot. You know, was mostly just cards. You know, I played sports. I was into memorabilia, huge into wrestling. I mean like you, I mean, I know we, you know, I like wrestling, but I don't think you know how much I like wrestling. <laughs> all I, well, when you said you went to the Memphis Coliseum, that's all you had to say. I love Memphis and it does not oh. get appreciated. Oh yeah. Well, of course, you know, a lot so, of it's not even politically correct now, but we'll not touch yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, exactly. Well, you know, just mid South Coliseum going down on bill street. Um, I went to a, a, a like a bring your own weapons uh, wrestling event. 
So, yep. you know, you, you, we went down to Home Depot and we grabbed some uh, those long light bulbs and took them out there and these guys <laughs> were smashing over their heads and, you know, it was a good, it was a good time. Um, so yeah, no, that was the, that was the majority of what I collected and what I, what I spent my time on was a whole lot of watching wrestling and wrestling with my friends in the backyard. You know, they'd always start the shows, you yep. know, do not, tr- like, do not try this at home. And then eventually the first thing outside. you do is try it first thing you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, in fact, my, my best friend in high school, we were, uh, this is kind of a funny story. So we used to like do trampoline wrestling. Um, that was our wrestling ring and all this kind of stuff. Um, and so, uh, we went to, we went to my buddy's church and we got some folding tables and, and chairs and, uh, we'd set them out and we're having wrestling matches and all that kind of stuff on the trampoline. Well, my friend, I picked up the chair and blocked himself and I smacked him straight in the face and it chipped his tooth, his front tooth right in the middle. And so he went home and, uh, he, he made up a lie to his mom about how he chipped his tooth and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, he, he never told her that I was the one that nailed him in the face with a chair, um, <laughs> and chipped his tooth. So, and so again, that's probably why it's the do not try this at home. You know, the other thing is, is, um, you know, the winter time that we're getting out of it now, but you know, you always wanted to do fireworks, um, you know, yep. with, with that. And so it was the winter and, you know, you're young and stupid and not thinking about it. And so I go out there and set off some fireworks. Well, I caught my parents' backyard on fire with the fireworks. From oh <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I mean, I've got a lot of those stories. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's a lot of fun and it's good memories. And I, you know, certainly miss those days of wrestling. I think somebody uh, had asked a question, you know, like, what do we, what's it going to take for wrestling to get back to the way it used to be? Um, right you know, and that sort of stuff. And so I guess just a, just a quick answer, not to take too much time. You know, I, I, I think I mentioned it before. It's they've got to find ways to let the, the talent be bigger stars than the company. Um, you know, again, I don't think, you know, Vince and Triple H, they don't want anybody to be bigger than them ever again. And so until they kind of let go of that rope um, and let, you know, let those folks, you know, get, get that, that star power. I think that's what you need. Um, and honestly, that's what I like. And I saw Yam yeah, mention, you know, with, with AEW, I have, I have really look forward to AEW every single week. Um, you know, raw SmackDown, I'll kind of just fast forward through it and kind of stop every now and then. But AEW for me is must watch TV. And I think there are some real stars on there. Um, and I know some people are like, uh, oh, it's kind of like TNA and all that kind of stuff. But I, I really enjoy it. Um, I think the, Storylines are compelling. The quality of the matches is top notch. Um, and I think that if you, know, you look at, I think they're going to give WWE some serious competition. You know, we've already seen WWE want to make the move of NXT from Wednesday to Tuesday nights. Um, and so I think there, I think there could be some competition there. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. Me too. Um, we can get into. Hopefully we can get everybody on, but if I lose you, thanks for coming on and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. It was kind of starting to cut out at the end, so I appreciate it. That's okay. Well, let's see if he's going to come on. There we go. We can have all three of us. Cool. Here we are. Hi, guys. Up, man? Hey, how's it going? I love that AEW take, Drake. Yeah. Uh, I just picked up some of these cards last year. Do you guys get any of the all in? Um, it's open yeah, because I sent a bunch to PSA. I bought those. I think I have like seven sets sitting in my counter. I bought them for like, uh, there was a value pricing on them on high spots, and they were like they ended up being about seven dollars a piece. So it's a it's a win for me. But hey, I traded one. I, I traded one to Mike Summer. We made a really awesome trade. I got some like got a big stack of like uh, Shaq and Rodman cards for my player collection. So I'm not afraid oh, to part with that stuff to the right people, you know. Hey, just talking about showing off those personalities, I was blown away by that Britt Baker Rosas uh, match last night. Anybody watching this should go to YouTube, the full matches on on uh, YouTube, and look that up. And then watch the reaction video afterwards. There's a video showing them, um, you know, crying and all the other wrestlers cheering for them as they come into the locker room area. And it's just really cool. You could tell like how much it meant to them, and also just how real it was. Like they were, it's real blood. And uh, it was an insane match. It was really, really fun. And you're right, Drake, those personalities just shine. So I'm excited to see how that grows and continues. But um, hey, and by the way, Drake, my son picked Arkansas. You'd be happy to know in his bracket this year. 
Oh. And his door is adorned with his bracket and then a picture he drew of a Razorback. So oh, fantastic. Awesome. fantastic. Yeah. I love it. So um I wanted to just back up back up Zan a little bit on the take. And I and I know we always, you know, are concerned about populations growing, Drake, but I just feel like on some of these pop culture, the guys who break through pop culture wrestlers. I don't know that we've seen the full flood come into wrestling just yet. Of course, we've seen Hogan and stuff go crazy, but how low the pops are, even the highest pop cards, like let's say, I don't know, like one of the rock cards gets to pop 50 in a PSA 10. That's so minuscule compared to, you know, what you and I are used to seeing in modern basketball, right, Trey? So. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so. I think so. You know, it, it's just, I, I, just as the economy opens up and hopefully COVID goes away, you know, it's, it's how many people are going to be there to spend that type of money that we're seeing now. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I really like, I'm curious to see beyond, say, even Hogan and The Rock, like the pop culture breakthroughs like Batista, like Cena, some of these guys uh, from the 2000s era, um, how, how they're going to break through as well, especially knowing how low pop that uh, O2 set is. So I've been checking Absolutely. that out too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So guys, I wanted to talk about... Um, you know, being a guy who's come in from other sports, I've actually sold off, and I talk about this a little bit on the Stack and Slabs podcast tomorrow, which me and Brett kind of went all over the place. So we talked a little what bit. What I like to hear. We were just talking about this. Like like you. Like <laughs> oh, I, my brain was a little scattered. I, you know, I, I didn't quite cover as much as I wanted to on any individual topic, but it was fun to talk with Brett. But one of the things we talked about is, like, you know, it's me, I'm a pop culture uh, wrestling fan. I, I dip in and I've watched some of the modern stuff, but I'm, you know, it's just, I haven't watched a lot of matches since the early nineties necessarily. Um, and here and there throughout. But so for me, I'm like you, Drake, I want to get like my big cards of certain guys, but I appreciate the grind that Zan has and, you know, always finding these great, um, opportunities where you're buying stuff for seven bucks and flipping it. Uh, that's just awesome, dude. And I love that you graded, you just graded so many cards too. I think that's super savvy because the pops are crazy. But anyway, um, so I, I thought I'd quickly review my big five, starting with one that I have from Zan. Does that sound good? Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. So I, I've been, I decided I wanted to do at least, most of my guys, most of my folks are vintage, but I wanted to do one modern chase to really get into somebody and PC somebody. So um, Charlotte Flair, this is the first Charlotte Flair that I bought. I was excited to get a limited auto. So that was cool. You know, and then I picked up her Topps Chrome. And I, I've kind of been on a, uh, trying to get like people's first ever Topps Chrome, whether that's The Rock or uh, that 2006 Heritage set, I think is the first Topps Chrome for a lot of these guys like Cena, like Hogan and everybody. So I picked up some of those. But, um, you know, so I have her Topps Chrome. But then Zan, I didn't know that she had a 2013 card. And you had on your channel... That's Slam Attack Charlotte. Yep. Best I could find so far is an 8.5, but that's uh, I'd like to level up on that one eventually, and I keep hunting for maybe a, a 9 or a 10. Um, so that's my first one, and that's that's I'm going to always think associate with you, Zan. And each of these cards has, like, a big wrestling collector. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for thank pointing you. that out. I'm glad I saw the video in the first hour so I could jump in and buy, a, buy one right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another one, just I'll go through the others quick. 1973, Andre. Uh, I love Andre, uh, Princess Bride, all that kind of stuff. And just what a character, man. Kids of the 80s, we watched those cartoons. Uh, you, you guys know wrestling was larger than yeah. life. And Andre was the epitome of that. And so what a what a dude. Um, so 73, and I associate that with Jeremy Padauer, who, you know, he's known kind of for the creating of figures, but he's also getting into wrestling. And he's talked about that as one of his top three possessions of all of his collectibles. Uh, and we know he's got some amazing stuff. So um, that's one I'm after. And I, I've got actually, I've bought a couple of the 73 wrestling annuals working on getting them cut. Rob is helping me out with that. And we're going to get them graded and see, you know, hopefully get the best grade I can. Uh, and then 82 All-Stars, of course, that one's going to take a while. That's going to take probably selling some more big cards, doing some flips to get into uh, an 82 All-Stars. Of course, David Peck is who I think of that. And what a, what a goat. Um, and then uh, 1997, uh, 1997, uh, Rocky Maivia. And I'm working on that one, actually. You know, bought a few boxes. Here's one that I haven't sent to PSA because it's a little OC. But I love the uh, – I've fallen in love now with the number 113 Rock. Uh, and, you know, that's – I think of the mensch, the godfather, the wrestling card king, uh, Rob, Rob England, and uh, appreciate him so much. And so, like, he found this card. And I think it is sort of a gift to the hobby. So I'm excited to uh, get these back from PSA. Hopefully, like, get a nine or something would be would be great. Um, and then lastly, the 2002 Cena. You know, our, our friend Brett stacking slabs. 
has yeah. been talking about what a fine that is. And I know, Zan, you're all over all these cards too, man. Um, but I'm just, you know, trying to pin one to individual collectors that I, uh, I so appreciate. And, um, and that 2002 low pop Cena again. So I've picked, picked up a raw, nice raw copy that I sent off to PSA now too. So those are my big five that I'm after. And then, uh, I just keep getting educated from the likes of you and your awesome channel, Zan. appreciate everything you're okay. doing. And, uh, you know, I'm going to round it out. I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill her all around that stuff. Uh, cause I'm enjoying the wrestling chase, but those, those are like the five pop culture guys I'm after. That's awesome. It's interesting to hear different perspectives on things. Cause like, um, there's, there's one Andre card that I'm a big fan of that Merlin card where he looks like a Miami mob boss. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's my favorite Andre card ever, but like, I really don't care about the other ones. Uh, I have any, I have two 82 all-stars. I'm just going to sell those. And okay. I've got some of the 87s. Like I understand the, the pop culture relevance of him and he's huge. But it, he was just, I was never personally a fan. Uh, I'm going to put Bret Hart in that same category. It's one of those guys where I like watching him when he's when I'm watching the network or whatever, and I loved watching yeah. him as a kid. But the cardboard relevancy of him is not really there for me. So it's cool that, you know, we can make this whole ecosystem work with everybody liking different things, but we all understand it. Totally, absolutely. Um, yeah, I got I got my wrestling inspiration initially. Of course, like every kid of the '80s, it was just it, it was everywhere. You couldn't escape it, and I loved it all. But um, my grandfather actually used to take my uncles to wrestling matches uh, back in the day, and I was like the little kid that was too young to go. So I'd hear about them, and they went, and they'd re they'd recount the matches. I might as well have seen them. Uh, but my grandpa was like this uh, big dude who looked a lot like Vern Gagne. He'd actually come from Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> he's bald and burly, uh, six foot four guy. And so every like he'd go to the dog track and people would announce, hey, Vern Gagne's in attendance. And someone would tell my grandpa to stand up. <laughs> and uh, my grandpa would sit me down like every picnic and say, hey, you know, I know you like basketball, but I just want you to know that Hulk Hogan is the greatest athlete that ever lived. <laughs> and so he, he, he loved wrestling and got me into it. And, you know, it's great to have the connection to your, uh, to your family. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, me and Drake have talked long enough. We'll just kind of give you the floor, whatever you want to talk about. Sounds good, buddy. Hey, are you uh, – am I showing up okay? <laughs> it's it's hitting me. It's, kind of it's kind of blurry. Yeah, your audio your has been fine the whole time, but the blur, the video is a little blurry. Gotcha. Well, darn it. Um, Drake – or Zan, we've got something coming up with this. I know you don't quite have details yet, but – uh, yeah, we, we do. Uh, me and Drake were actually just talking about this because I was like, hey, if you want a spot in our break, you can be patient, but you don't have to break yours. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. It's, it's so tough to decide to break these or not, but I couldn't help it. I broke all of mine except for the one that I gave to Zan, you know, that we're going to collaborate on together. Um, I, I guess I have a question for you, Drake. I kind of, it's an era, I missed a lot of the Brock Lesnar era. Um, and I, but Brock wrestled at the University of Minnesota when I was there. And I, I got to say, I didn't attend a, a lot of or any of the college wrestling matches, but he was a big man on campus, literally, uh, but also was a national champion. And I would see him at the bars, like the widest back you've ever seen, man. <laughs> <laughs> kind of guy you were afraid to talk to, like in his leather coat that's bursting at the seams when he's sitting at the bar. Um, but, you know, I, so I don't really know. What is, what is the attraction? Uh, what, what do you like about Brock? What I like about Brock, I, you know, I think the biggest thing, and I'll, I, I mentioned this on my page the other day, is, you know, f first of all, I saw him uh, wrestle in a, in a dark match, which was a pre-match before uh, a Raw back in Little Rock back in 2002. So, you know, when I saw him, I was like, this guy is going to be a star, right? And just like you said, he's huge and things like that. But I think what I like about him and what we've all talked about is kind of he's a transcendent athlete, right? So he wrestled in college. Uh, he comes to professional wrestling. Then he decides right after WrestleMania 20, right, he wants to try out for pro football. Um, and so he goes and he tries that, um, you know, and then he decides, hey, let's go to the UFC. And he becomes a heavyweight champion in the UFC. Um, and then he decides to come back to wrestling. Um, and so, you know, he's kind of a unique personality, I guess. You know, he just kind of he kind of comes 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 across as, you know, not maybe the friendliest guy in the world. I'm not sure how he is in real life. But I think you just have to respect the, a person who can do multi sports, right, and do very well at them. You know, he's he's a world champion in both the UFC and the WWE, and nobody else can say that they did that. 
Um, and so I think that's why, that's why he's somebody that I like to follow and, you know, and collect. Respect. I want to pile on top of that for one second. I am a huge Brock Lesnar fan for everything he just said, but there's one other thing that I think is really underrated, and that's kind of the shroud of mystery around this guy. And that's what pro wrestling is missing. There's too many people that are I, – I, we all know it's a predetermined, sure, but there are too many people, I think, in the wrestling business that kind of go out and like, hey, yeah, we're friends after the match. Like, you're not supposed to be friends. Like, you're, you're supposed to, you know – like, listen to the Undertaker interviews. He played the character inside and outside the ring forever until he's retired. And I think that's one thing that, like, Brock is the guy that's still holding that. He's not on social media. You don't see him doing interviews. So it's a constant shroud of mystery in combination with being a transcendent athlete. So that's another reason why I like Brock. I love yeah. it. Oh, exactly. Well, and then on top you know, of that, I mean, he married safe. He Married Sable, so that's yeah. got to speak for something. <laughs> hey, you know, just speaking of Sable, she's got a number of cards in that WWF 97 Superstars set. But um, uh, a bonus of the set is it reveals a 97 China rookie when she only had 98s yeah. before this. So that's been fun to hit some of those and, and see those. Um, one thing I was going to say about wrestling cards is, like, I have a feeling if more and more 80s, 90s kids get into it, you're going to, there, there's just a joy about getting them. You know, I, I don't know. It's, oh, here's one. Like, these are not expensive cards. These um, scratch-off cards that have the Circle K Super Match ones. And I didn't have these cards as a kid. But just, it's like such a great pose. And I, it makes me happy every time that I hold yep. or look at this card. Almost every wrestling card brings back such great memories. Uh, the cards are, a lot of them are really, really well done with the characters. And I think they're a joy to own. And what's what's collecting, if not, you know, finding joy and nostalgia and great memories? And so I, I think wrestling is just um, something that gets in your blood if, if you get into wrestling cards. And I could see people that, if once people make the dive, I, I got to say, I kind of eschewed it for a while. I was after all basketball and all football. Um, and as I got into it, I, I love it as much as anything. But I would say one other thing that's really close to that, Zan, you brought up earlier, Congrats on the NBA Jam. Yeah. I spelled it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest video He's... game of all time. Oh, so good. He's on fire. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, yeah. these give me so much joy to hold these games and, like, remember. And people say, oh, we want to yeah. play them. But, like, guys, you're, you're right. Um, we can just buy those little video game things that you can play these on now, the, the ROM type of things. But having a punch out, having Tecmo, putting them on your shelf. Um, they're a joy to, to look over, to pull out, to pull out the cartridges. Like, you feel that r rigged, that rugged cartridge, and it brings you back to, like, trying to make that thing work in your nest, blowing in it, um, and all the good vibes, hanging out with your buddies. You know, you remember sitting in some kid's basement, having tournaments for three hours while you're hopped up yeah. on Kool-Aid, and uh, you're feeling the, the rough carpet underneath you. It's like, you just, it all comes back. And I'm hoping that that nostalgia will, like, kind of power up the low, lower level of everything, whether it's action figures or whether it's, you know, Greg the Hammer Valentine 85 Tops cards. Like, I just want to see all that. Even if I'm not personally interested, I want to see all of that stuff just go crazy. Yeah, it brings us joy. And we get our, you know, for me and, and I think for Drake as well, we get our kids involved, you know, and whether they like it or not, they see, they see dad enjoying, you know, their youth and saying, hey, it's okay to have fun, be a kid. And our lives are so serious. I know my day-to-day, -day, the hobby for me, I kind of goof around a little bit and have fun because, you know, my day job is pretty serious. Um, I'm a headhunter and I've got to, you know, really take that uh, very seriously, very discreetly. And so after that, it's like time to let loose and have a good time. Um, you know, another thing about my grandpa is like he, he was a collector and I didn't quite know to what extent because he'd always show me like coins and the things that people used to be in, right? His thing was coins, rare old coins. And they were cool. But then when my grandpa passed away, my uncles found this amazing coin collection that was like, oh, okay, grandma gets to go to the good retirement home now. You know, like we couldn't believe he had this amazing collection. And it was just because it was something that brought him joy and he loved sharing it with us. Um, so these things get in your blood. Right. Oh, Yam, real quick, you want to list, uh, someone asked if you could rename the five uh, wrestling cards that you pulled out again real quick. And who, who oh, you yeah. With? You got it. For me, for me, it's uh, Andre the Giant. I'm going with the 1973, um, the 1982 Hogan All-Stars uh, in any grade. 
uh, a lot of these I'm looking for the highest grade I can get, but I'd say Hogan All-Stars, I'd take one, 1. 1.5, right? Like it's such an right. enormous card. Uh, then we've got the uh, 1997 uh, Rock. I, I like the Panini Rock, the Cardinal Rock, also a phenomenal card. Uh, then you have 2002 John Cena. And for me, it's the 2013 Charlotte Slam Attacks to have a more modern PC. And I think she could be, I think, like, I just impressed with her persona. Um, and again, you're right. Like, it depends on what Vince lets happen. But um, she, she just seems like the type of person that could cross over and, and have some kind of, like, TV franchise down the road or something. You never know. But I, I just, I think she's uh, I think she got approved for the, uh, like, another Walking Tall reboot or something like that she's supposed to be in. Wow. Yeah, cool. so there, there you go. There's your crossover to like, yeah. pop culture. But there's so many great, so many great female stars right now. Um, I think it'd be you can kind of choose any from a few of them, and they all have star potential. Hey, uh, well, guys, you got. I think we might got. We might have five minutes left before we get cut off. Hey, what do you guys think about the Miz? You know, he he had the the real world, and he's coming to wrestling, and he's done some movies. But I mean, all his stuff is really cheap. I wonder is he is he someone that. Um, you know, that people aren't looking into that they will look into, or is he just kind of one of those fringe, fringe type guys? I want to hear from Zan. (laughs) (laughs) Not, not even in the slightest, not because he's supposed to be a heel, but he has like turn the channel heat with me. I'm just like, (laughs) Oh, But uh, there's uh, he has a huge fan base, and if you're looking for stuff to like flip or stuff to invest in, if you're not necessarily a fan, I think there's probably there's just so many opportunities with modern stars right now. I look at them as penny stocks because they have a fan base. It's a worldwide thing, and just because I don't like them doesn't mean that it's not. We we saw it recently with the uh, like him and Maurice had pretty high front runs, so. Uh, there's as opposed to Shinsuke, pure wrestling fans would be like, oh well, he's much better than the Miz. His current run was under a thousand, so like that just tells you what people. If you want to compare those two guys, yep. It seems like MJF has a has a really interesting persona. He's someone I'm very very intrigued by. Yes, so. love him. He pulled out uh, not too long ago. I believe his first card is in that. I think that's his first card. Oh wow, cool. Well, you guys, guys thanks, for, thanks for coming on. You got anything else before we get out of here? No, thanks for, so much, Zan. Uh, the hobby is awesome. There's so many phenomenal people. Like, we were just talking about it community-wise, when you can dive into something. I haven't found a better community than the card community, and I'm absolutely loving the wrestling card community, and you guys yeah. have spent a blast hanging out. That's what I was going to say. The wrestling card community people I've never met in my whole life, just, like, it's so welcoming, and everybody's just about to have a lot of fun. Whether you're making money, whether you're not selling anything, it's just everybody can come together. It's a great, great community. Yeah, no, yeah thanks for all you do, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's great. a lot of fun. Yeah, man, I think it's great. You know, just like you said, we're, you know, I think we're, there's the wrestling car community is still really small, you know, and I think it's fun to be able to collect, you know, it's like everybody's collecting LeBron, everybody's collecting Michael Jordan, Kobe, you know, things like that. So I think it's fun to be a little bit different. Um, and kind of go and just kind of make your own path, um, you know, and find things that people don't know about and find things that, that you love. Um, and that's what, what makes a great collection. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for jumping in the chat and joining us. Yam, Drake, thanks, guys, for joining me. Uh, Thank this you will very hopefully much. be on the. If any of you guys in the chat missed it, or if you do want to go back and catch something you missed previously, uh, this should be live on the YouTube channel later tonight. So thanks again, everybody. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Be well, guys. See you. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, give me one of these. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell icon so you never miss any more uploads. And like I said, if you like these kind of things, go follow me on Instagram to make sure you get in on the next one when I send out alerts for that. Thanks again for checking out the video. Hope you guys have an awesome day. See ya.